It's Frostgrave Week and we have three amazing bundles to give away. We'll be choosing winners from the comments on three of our communities. One from the comments on YouTube, one from the comments from OnTabletop.com, and from the Cult of Games members comments so you guys get an extra chance to win. Drop those comments in and we hope you enjoy the week. Everybody and welcome to vlog. Myself and Jerry are here in the studio today uh, to tell you that we are going to be working on a Frostgrave gaming table. Well, three Frostgrave gaming tables, I think. Yeah, Jerry? Yes, I have massive plans. I have huge plans. I have plans so comprehensive that mortal man cannot comprehend just how big my plans are. And I assume my, my time, my skills and my hands have been annexed. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, I won't be doing any of this myself. I come up with the idea. I'm the inspiration. And the muse. You, and you are the perspiration <laughs> doing all the work. So uh, if you haven't played Frostgrave before, the idea is it's played on a three foot by three foot square board. We have more than that. Uh, and we're also planning on playing several games with several different scenarios. So what I thought, don't say no just yet, but what okay. I thought was we would have our six foot by four foot gaming table all done as part of Felstad, we've got our lovely city there. The, the central three foot will be the section done for the scenario. And, and the then, rest and is then, beautification? And, yeah. So you might see like the graveyard over there. And then maybe the next scenario, the graveyard will be in the middle as we roam around the map of Felstad. Okay, I'm 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 kind of seeing what you're you're going for here. Yeah. So it's it's less the the main Frostgrave city, more the the sub district of you know Jerry'sville. Yeah. Oh, no, no, this is definitely where the High Flyers would be in this town. Yeah. So um, we've actually got a lot of the stuff from, well, I said a lot of the stuff, we scratched the surface of Cromlech's official Frostgrave terrain here uh, to give us the basis for our city. Um, and each of them is sort of themed, mm. themed around a scenario. Okay. Well, I mean, like, we know each game has its own sort of requirements for terrain. Yeah. So do you want to maybe start walking me through what you have selected yeah. to build the city? Yeah. Um, obviously, the main thing is rock and roll. That is what we build our city on. Uh-huh. But apart from that, um, I really like this picture in this book. If you can see this, John, old buddy, old pal. Because we've done a few frosty terrain-based tables mm. uh, for different games, and we've always been kind of greyish. Uh, it's always a dark stone. Yeah, uh, and which is what they have, and it looks great. But I think overall, as an official look, mm. I want to go for the sort of red sandstone. And I was looking at this beautiful vista of ruined temples and archways and that sort of thing. So I've put together three sets for our three games. Okay. Uh, and if we look, well, we'll start here. So there is a silent tower scenario. Mm -hmm. This is our big, massive, it's actually three towers that are interlocked or two towers in a building that are interlocked. And this will be a massive monumental piece in the middle for our versus game when we've got a couple of war bands of wizards fighting across this tower. And I think to set that off, if we add in some of this lovely city runes. I like it. It's quite nice. Which is more upmarket, multiple levels, some reconstruction done. You've got stone, you've got wood and wattle. It gives you that idea that this was a sort of a, a high-flying part of the city. Yeah, so it was like the party district. Yeah, very much the party district. I like that. For another game, mm -hmm. I'm going to go for Haunted Houses which uses this set of haunted houses. Okay. Uh, you may find wraiths, you may find ghouls, you may find a massive kicking on the other side. Um, but to complement the haunted houses, and this is you know exactly what you need for the scenario, mm. I thought we could then combo that with both the cemetery and the town ruins. And these are lower, more moderate, modest pieces of terrain. So somewhere for the plebs to live. Not just the plebs, but it's abutting the graveyard. So we've got sort of a mausoleum feel. It's not as high upmarket. You wouldn't have a huge wizard's tower 
bang slap bang in the middle of the cemetery, but you might have these terrible little mausoleums and dirty houses pushed up against the cemetery. See, I could kind of argue that because if you're a necromancer, having a graveyard on site could they, be useful. They weren't necromancers. When this, when this city fell, it wasn't full of necro. It wasn't like a whole city of necromancers, all with ensuite okay. cemeteries. Okay. It could be in your mind, but... Well, you know, I just I like the idea of lesser buildings and the cemetery abutting. And then our final one, um, which I think could be a lot of fun for the cooperative game. There's a great scenario called the Summoning Bell. Mm. And it's this ridiculous piece of kit. And at the end of every turn, from all four corners of the table, spawn monsters. Not, oh. not like the other games where they may spawn, but they will spawn because this bell... Is actually included. I went, well, we've got to have that. Nice bit of resin. I like that little resin detail. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, this could just be used because it's it's kind of a towery thing. It's kind of a, you know, like a church spirey type nonsense going on. We could just dress it with a mixture of the town and city runes just mm-hmm. to give us that sort of flavor. And then with all of these, because you want a lot of line of, line of sight blocking stuff, we've got... Uh, a range of the three different types of resin. So some of these are marketplace things, barrels and uh, boxes and crates. Mm. And then some of them are um, old stonework that's collapsed. And you see that a lot in the pictures in the book. And I think just having those as sort of scatter pieces and blocking off line of sight is a great way to go. Because they do say things have a maximum range, like bows have got a 24 inch range. They do say at no point should anybody see a full 24 inches unobstructed. So those are just to sort of dress and play around with it. Mm. So now all we've got to do is wait for you to build it. Well, uh, let's let's quickly talk about division of labor, okay? Yes. So what I'm thinking is, Mm. I know you can paint pretty quickly when you put a mind to it. I can do, yes. So I'm thinking, you see all this this lovely, lovely resin down the front. I'm thinking, let's maybe send that with you. Okay. I will build the HDF. Mm. And then let's maybe co-opt a John to do some nice airbrush work on the, the HDF stuff. What do you think? I, I think that's fantastic. I think John will uh, stare daggers at you or throw stones at your head. Uh, John? Yeah. Okay, so I'm a dead man. <laughs> but yeah, do, you, no, do you have a necromancer in your warband? I might no, need one. No, I don't. Um, more in May. Maybe. We'll see. But no, that sounds, that sounds good to me. I, this is going to be fairly quick. So there's not going to be a huge amount of time spent showing you how we're going to be going through all this because uh, time is pressing for us. Mm. Um, But yeah. So I'm I'm guessing we're probably going to have a little bit of a building montage. I'll maybe stop in once or twice to show you a couple of the completed pieces before they're painted. And then we'll probably come back for more of a complete look. Yeah, I think that seems sensible. When when everything's painted and done and dusted and we can throw it on, on the gaming table and show people what we're going to be playing with. All right. See you in a bit. Hey everybody, back for another update for the Frostgrave table. So, uh, we've been adjusting our plans slightly. So, I've sent some stuff off with Jerry to build, and this is what I've built. So, we've got a tower set here, which is a big, monstrous piece of terrain. So, you've got your main tower, you've got a smaller tower here, and then you've got like a a little burnt down house here. Uh, I've also built the mausoleum set, which is a really nice, like, modular terrain set where you can just lay this out as big or as small as you want to make yourself a nice graveyard within the city. Uh, The next step that I have to go to is getting it primed. So what we're going to be going with is Army Painter Fur Brown. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if Jerry has used the exact same colors as me, but once I have this primed, I'm boxing it up and I'm going to post it off to him to actually get all of the painting work done so that he can come in later this week and for us to film a couple of games. So uh, get your comments in below whenever we're finished with this. Tell us how you would build your Frostgrave table. Uh, The next person you're going to hear from is hopefully Jerry. Hello everybody and welcome back to the end of the vlog. So, uh, as with COVID being COVID, it's kind of crappy, so I have brought in the remote presence of Jerry. This is Jerry Bot 1.0, we will improve. Uh, Jerry, you have done a Hello. fantastic job on the paintwork here, mate. Thank so, you. Uh, we didn't end up using all the kits, so what kits did we use at the end up? Well, uh, things got ahead of us somewhat due mm-hmm. to the season of goodwill and 2020 in general um we ended up using uh, a combination of the silent tower kit which is the three big buildings so the the two towers 
and the large sort of Tudor building. Uh, the haunted house set, which is five solid ruined sort of uh, small houses or crypts. Mm -hmm. um, the graveyard set and then the um, rune set as well. And on top of that, we also had the four uh, resin sets. So we, we didn't do the town runes, mm -hmm. which are the sort of the, the two up, two down, Tudor-esque rune set. And we didn't use the uh, bell tower. Mm -hmm. Everything else got used, mind you. Mm -hmm. And there are plans for the, the new year where we, we will revisit Frostgrave to maybe do like a co-op game with some of those sets possibly because yes. I, I i'm very curious to see what it's like because we've, we've seen the the solo mode we've played we've seen the 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 versus mode we played <laughs> and i'm very curious to see how it works whenever it's it's people cooperating together so yeah i have like, plans for that we'll see whether or not we get to do it mm -hmm. now but i have plans painting wise you mm. want to do something different with this because normally whenever you see these sets they're always sprayed in greys Yes. You found some artwork showing some like sandy stone sort of uh, buildings in the frozen city. Is that sort of what you were aiming for with this? Yeah, um, the artwork that Rue Moore had done uh, of the, there's like a two page spread in the Frostgrave book mm -hmm. that we looked at with that very reddish sandstone contrasted beautifully against the sort of the blues and whites of the snow of Frostgrave. And I thought rather than have another dreary, dismal, gray city if this was supposed to be some sort of extravagant magical place once that just mm -hmm. happened to got frozen solid uh, why not go with that red and it gives you quite a nice contrast between the uh, the game mat and the miniatures so you're not not everybody is running about in a uh, grim up north looking setting mm -hmm. so uh, myself and john decided we were going to paint them like that uh, then john picked out the colors mm -hmm. um, for the wood which was because I have them here very cleverly. Uh, uh, three, three army painter colours. Uh, mm -hmm. Fur brown was the main body of it, which is that nice sort of reddish brown. Mm -hmm. And then picked out details in monster brown and troll claw, which is a sort of a yellowy colour. And that was essentially the triad throughout. But it also meant then that I could play around a bit because coincidentally, troll claw and uh, monster brown are very similar to the colors I used for the wood, um, doing my weathered wood effect, mm -hmm. which meant there were contrasts running throughout both the wooden parts and then the um, the stonework. So you had this sort of a consolidation of colors. It wasn't a particularly large palette. In fact, mm -hmm. I think it was only five colors and a brown wash on the walls and a black wash on some of the wood um, mm -hmm. to keep it more or less the same throughout. Because even though there's there's some resin and some mdf in there i didn't want them to look desperately different between them so yeah well i mean like it it has turned out absolutely great I, I love some of the the little details i mean like like the the broken wall with the fountain on it or hmm. things like the actual the main tire itself and the resin bits do blend in sort of like seamlessly with the mdf stuff uh now there's one other thing that we did to this hmm. And we did it on the day, and I thought it was quite clever. Because we're in the Christmas season, we wanted to do sort of a, a temporary snow flock effect, yeah. but we didn't want it to be like a permanent, permanent thing. So we wanted something that could just be wiped off. So what we did was, well, what Jerry did was, he went up to the works, which is like a, a little local art supply shop. So it's like a discount art supply shop. Mm -hmm. And you picked up some like spray snow that you get for like doing your windows and stuff. Yeah. John and myself, I, I was talking about putting snow flock on them permanently anyway. Mm. John was thinking um, we'd get more use out of it if we left it off. Mm -hmm. uh, as it was, the choice was made because I ended up having to um, cut short the amount of time I had painting these. Mm -hmm. So went for the next best thing, which was spray on snow. So it's, it's the best of both worlds. We got the mm -hmm. snow on there, but it can be brushed off, mm -hmm. I imagine, with limited damage. Um, because nothing's varnished yet. Time will tell how easy that is to brush off. Yeah. But it does just give it a really, and it, it sets it into the, the mat, it sets it into the world, and, mm -hmm. and matches quite closely some of the pictures from the book where you have those little dustings of snow on top of things. So mm -hmm. it worked and quite it's, well. It's, it's such a contrast, the, the white of the snow on some of the resin pieces, because you can see mm -hmm. down the front here, 
there's a set of barrels here that have it and a set that don't. And the snow from those spray cans actually really sits naturally as if it is just falling snow that has settled on it. Yeah. Um, it, it does say, weirdly, because you have to spray upwards with those mm -hmm. cans, there was an awful lot of myself and Justin holding them above our heads and spraying upwards because if mm -hmm. you sprayed down, then the propellant didn't push any snow out, um, which was amusing. But it does, it, it gives that natural look um, mm. which you want when you're putting snow flock on things. You don't want to start to push it into corners where it wouldn't land mm -hmm. unless there's some sort of drift, in which case you keep it on one side. But as by and large, I think we mostly hit it from above until we, we ran out of, uh, out of snow. Mm -hmm. That's that's the one bit of advice I would give everybody, anybody that's using that particular technique is buy at least a couple extra cans compared to what you think you need because there's not a huge amount in those teeny weeny little cans. Yeah, yeah. But a few sprays and they were gone. We ended up having to uh, shuffle buildings around to get the best out of it. So some some have snow, some don't. But I think mm -hmm. overall it gives a fairly good impression of, of what Felstad looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like, it's it's a beautiful table. And the nice thing is everything that's on the table is official. So from the mat to the terrain to the miniatures, you can basically recreate this yourself if you really want to. Jerry, I've got to say, mate, thank you very much for the amount of work you put into this because you, you really did go above and beyond. Uh, I think the only thing left to do is pass it out to everybody out there. Hopefully you're you're enjoying Frostgrave Week. Hopefully you're, you're enjoying the Let's Plays we're doing, the interviews we're doing. Uh, drop your comments below. What do you think of the table? Is there any like particular scenarios or anything you yourselves want to see us maybe do in the future? Me and Jerry will move on and we'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.